Hi everyone, welcome to Rain Francis Art for Kids. My name is Rain. In this series, Let's Draw Fairy Tales, we choose a fairy tale and we draw it. I will also read the fairy tale to you. It's going to be a lot of fun. So let's begin. Today I'm going to tell you the tale of Little Red Riding Hood and I'm also going to show you how to draw her. So let's begin. This is what you'll need for today's lesson. You'll need a piece of paper. I've got a dollar store drawing pad that I've just turned the other way. So it's 11 tall by eight and a half wide. You'll need a pencil. You'll need an eraser. And if you have an old paintbrush, this is the dollar store one lying around that you haven't used for paint. It works really well to dust off your page. You're also gonna need some color today. Now obviously we're going to need red for Little Red Riding Hood's hood and cape and her boots. I'm going to make her dress pink. I'm going to make her hair brown. And I've also got kind of um, a yellowish color for the basket. And I chose a little purple color for the cakes inside the basket. You can choose whatever color you want. I also have a black coloring pencil and I will be using a black fine tip marker for detail work at the end. I think I've got everything listed here so why don't I clear the space and we can begin. Now this is a little bit of an advanced drawing. But if you follow my instructions, I think it'll be pretty easy. We're going to start with Little, Little Red Riding Hood's head. And we're going to make her head a round shape. So just a round circle for her head. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is start her cape. Now for her cape, we're going to do kind of like a bit of a W watch. like a W. That's part of her cape. That's the collar of her cape. And then probably not quite at the edge, but about here, I'm going to bring down a line and I'm going to make a little bit of a squiggly, bring it up to the middle, do the same thing on the other side, a bit of a squiggly and then up. Now that's her cape. Okay. Now she's got a little, I'm going to put her dress about here and it's going to be a little squiggly line like this and then another little squiggly line right under it. Just like that. All right. Now we're going to draw her legs. Her legs are going to come out probably about here. She's got skinny, short little legs. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to lift my page a little bit. I want to make sure you can see that. So we've got her little legs here. I have a little mark there. And then we're going to draw her boots. Her, I didn't do her legs properly. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. One's too skinny. Okay, there we go. All right. And then we're going to draw her little boots, just like that. Okay. Now around her head, we're going to draw her hood. Watch how I do this. That's her hood. Okay. And let's give her some eyes. 
big oval eyes. I love my oval eyes with the oval in the middle for the pupil. All right. And she's got a little nose, just a little C for a nose. And a big smile. And we'll put in some details later for her smile and her cheeks and her eyelashes. Now for her hair, I'm going to make her have some bangs. And then it's going to come up like this. And on the other side, we're going to do this with some bangs. And I'm going to let her hair come outside. We're going to do some erasing, so don't worry. The last thing we have to do is put in her sleeves and her hands and a basket. But before we do that, let's take our eraser. And you see this area here where I brought the hair outside of the circle? Erase all of this stuff in there. And if you accidentally erase something you didn't want to, just draw it in again. No big deal. Okay, that looks more like hair. Now what we're going to do is put in some sleeves. I'm putting in a sleeve here. And a sleeve here. And if you want, you can go ahead and erase this part of her cape here. Watch. And we can draw it back in later. But right now, let's erase it because it'll be easier to erase it now than later. And we're just going to give her little hands. Doesn't matter what they look like. This is a cartoon. And actually, while I'm at it, I'm going to erase the bottom of her cape and we'll fill that in after too, okay? Just erase the bottom of her cape. That'll make it easier for us because we're going to draw a basket there. All right, so now watch how I draw the basket. I'm just drawing a little semicircle in between her hands. And I'm going to do that again. And then another little semicircle here. And another little semicircle here. And then let's just draw a little basket. Okay? And we can do a little crisscross pattern here for the basket. You can make them as big or as small as you want. There we go. Now Red Riding Hood has some cakes that she's bringing her grandma. So I'm just putting in a few little shapes. They don't have to be anything in particular. Some round, some square doesn't matter. We're going to color those in after. Okay, so now we can put that line back in for the cape. The only thing is don't draw the line over her hands, the cakes, or the basket. So watch. I'm going to finish that line here, stop it there, start it again here, and then bring it up like that. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. There we go.
Now what I'd like you to do is on the top of her sleeves, we're just going to put a line and a line. Because if you've ever worn a cape, you know sometimes there's holes in it where you can stick your hands out. That's what she has there. Okay. Let's do just a little bit of detail right now. I'm going to give her some eyelashes and we're going to outline all of this with either black marker or black coloring pencil so it's going to be very, very obvious. And let's give her some cheeks. Do you remember from my previous lessons how to give cheeks? A little semicircle at either side of the smile. Okay, so now we're going to put some stripes on her socks. I'm going to put two stripes. You can put as many as you want, as thick as you want. There we go. You might hear my animals snoring in the background. <laughs> Okay, so we've got Little Red Riding Hood all drawn out. So now we can start coloring her, coloring her in. That was hard to say, coloring her in. There we go. <laughs> so I think what we'll start off with is her hair. So I'm using my brown color for her hair and I'm gonna start coloring in her hair with my coloring pencil. And if you're using a coloring pencil, I want you to press very lightly and turn your pencil a little bit once in a while. We press very lightly so that we don't break the tip of our pencil and also so that we don't tire out our hands. Because if your hand's tired, then you're not going to feel like drawing, and drawing is so much fun. We want to make sure your hands aren't tired. And the reason we turn our pencil once in a while is so that it doesn't wear down all on one side. Because when it wears down like that, you have to sharpen it more often, and it doesn't last you as long as it would if you were careful with it. Everything is so expensive these days, we want to really take care of our art supplies. Well, we want to take care of everything that we own. So I'm turning my pencil and I'm coloring in all of her hair. Okay, so I'm going to go in, color in this side of her hair now. You don't have to use brown. You can make her hair any color that you want. I just suggest you don't make it red because then it'll be the same color as the hood and you won't be able to tell what's her hair and what's the hood. So you can make her hair black or blonde, you can make it yellow, or she can have a crazy color hair like blue. <laughs> Any color you want. Don't forget to turn your pencil and really don't press too hard. There's no need to do that. Because I'm going to show you, if you've been following my lessons, you know that we use layers. And if you're new to this channel and to my art lessons, I'm going to tell you in just a minute what a layer is. It's a great technique for drawing and for painting. All right. 
right, so I've got our hair all colored in. Now I'm going to apply a second layer of brown, and all that means is I'm going to color it in a second time. And I'm really not pressing hard. I'm turning my pencil. And the way I color is I color in little circles. I don't do straight lines like that because I, it's just my preference, I don't like to see straight lines in my coloring. Can you see the difference between this side and this side? It's very subtle with the brown, but when you put more layers on, the brown will get darker. That's why I say don't press hard. You can get the darkness you want by adding layers. Okay, you see the difference? So I'm going to go ahead and put a second layer on the other side of her hair. Turning my pencil once in a while. All right, there we go. Little Red Riding Hood's hair is done for me. So the next thing, I'm gonna do her cape and her hood last because that's the biggest thing that we have to do. I've chosen for her dress the color pink. Now you can choose any color you want except for like a like her hair, don't choose red because then you won't be able to tell the difference between the cape and her dress. So I'm just going to color in her dress, which is under the cape. It's all here. Okay. This little frill here, I'm going to leave that white. Now don't forget to turn your pencil. And when you're coloring here, don't color in the basket at all, okay? We're going to leave that for now. We don't want any pink on her hands or in the basket. Now I'm choosing to keep her skin white, but you can color her skin any color you want. She doesn't have to be white. You see how I left the top of the basket? I'm also going to leave this part of the basket too and not touch that and just go underneath and finish off her pink dress underneath. Okay, turning my pencil, and like I said, I'm going to keep that little frill at the bottom white. At least I think I am right now. I think so, yeah. Kind of looks like she's wearing a slip under there. I don't know if you know what a slip is. <laughs> I don't know if people wear slips anymore. Okay, I'm going to go in and put a second layer of pink. And I'm going just very gently turning my pencil okay those second layers really make the colors vibrant I want you to Always think of doing layers when you're coloring and even when you're painting. I have a few videos up showing you how to paint certain scenes. 
and I know at least for the watercolor painting, we did a, a starry night, I believe it was. We did a couple of layers of watercolor. Okay, so I've got her dress all colored in, her pink dress. I'm working from top to bottom, so the next thing I'm going to work on is the top of the basket. And that's where I have this kind of yellowy, browny type of color. You can use pure brown, you can use pure yellow, you can make your basket green, you can make it blue, any color you want, but again, don't make it red, because <laughs> then you won't see it with the cape. And as I'm going along, I'm putting in a second layer right away. Okay, you see that? Doing one layer right away here on the handle of the basket. And then I'm going in right away and putting in a second layer, turning my pencil. Okay, that's the handle. Now I'm going to come back to this yellow after, but I've chosen purple for the cakes in here. You can choose any color you want. And I'm just going to go ahead and color in the cakes. Because that's what Little Red Riding Hood is bringing to her grandma today. Some cakes. There's a lot of dust from this pencil. Little Red Riding Hood is my favorite fairy tale of all. I love it. There's a really nice version of a movie out there. I think it's just called Riding Hood or Red Riding Hood or something like that. It's not for young kids because it can be very scary. <laughs> but I think adults would think it would be great. I'm going to put in a second layer of this purple for the cakes. And if you're a fan of Bugs Bunny, if you've ever watched Bugs Bunny, he plays Little Red Riding Hood a couple of times and it's very funny. Very, very funny. He sings a song. How does it go? The Wabbit in Wed. La da da dee 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 the Wabbit. The Wabbit in Wed. <laughs> Something like that. It's very funny. It's my favorite Bugs Bunny cartoon when he plays Little Red Riding Hood. He always outsmarts the wolf. Okay, so the purple cakes are done. How about I give you a second there to catch up? I'm going to have a little drink of water and listen closely because I've got the microphone on my shirt and you're going to hear me gulping. <laughs> it picks up the uh, when you swallow, so listen. Did you hear that? <laughs> I can't help it. I think it's very funny. Okay, so for the basket, I'm going to use that same yellow, but I'm also going to use brown, and I'm going to show you. I'm just going to go over the basket like this, very lightly with the yellow, turning my pencil. one little layer of yellow and then I'm going to do a very light layer of the brown on top just to make it different from the handle. You can do the same color as the handle. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I just want to make it look a little different. Now let's see, what was I going to do for her stockings or her socks? I think I'm going to make them black and pink. So why don't I start off with the pink? Remember those stripes? I'm going to make those stripes black. So the rest of her sock, 
is going to be pink. She's very color coordinated. Mm -hmm. Pink dress and pink socks. <laughs> If you get a little pink into there, into the, the stripes, don't worry because we're coloring it black so it's going to cover the pink. I'm going to go in and put a second layer in right away. And I'm not pressing hard at all. How are you guys doing? I hope this isn't too complicated for you. This is definitely a more advanced drawing, but I think it's a great idea to challenge yourself. Even if you think it's tough, keep at it. That's how you learn. All right, I'm taking my black coloring pencil and I'm gonna fill in those four stripes. And I'm giving it a second layer while I'm there, just to make it nice and dark. Okay. Giving it a second layer. Now for this sock here, same thing. And giving it a second layer. In this instance, I don't mind doing straight lines like this because it is a stripe. So if, if my straight lines showed, I wouldn't care because it is supposed to be a stripe. Second layer. There we go. Now, the rest of her is going to be all red except for her face and her hands. And of course that little frill there that I decided I wanted to keep white, but her boots are going to be red too. So I'm going to take my red color and I'm going to basically color in her entire hood, her collar, the cape, her sleeves, and her boots. And don't forget the little part in here. That has to be red too. Okay, I'm going to do a first layer. And as I'm doing the first layer, I'm going to read you the story. I'm going to read you the fairy tale of Little Red Riding Hood. So just take your time, press very lightly, and remind yourself to turn your pencil once in a while, okay, as I'm reading the fairy tale. Once upon a time, there was a girl who lived in the woods with her mother. The girl's name was Little Red Riding Hood. One day, Little Red Riding Hood wanted to go and visit her grandmother, who also lived in the woods. She wanted to bring her some cakes. Little Red Riding Hood's mother said, okay, you can go visit your grandmother, but be sure to stay on the path and go right to grandma's house and do not talk to strangers. So Little Red Riding Hood listened to her mother and said, yes, mother. She packed up her basket with some cakes, put on her hood and her cape and her boots, and she started skipping down the path in the woods to her grandma's house. Along the way, she met a wolf. Now, Little Red Riding Hood didn't know that this was a bad wolf. She's very innocent, and she didn't think anyone could hurt her. She certainly didn't realize that the wolf wanted to eat her. The wolf had to stop himself from eating Little Red Riding Hood right away because there were some woodsmen nearby, and he did not want to get caught. But the wolf asked Little Red Riding Hood 
Little girl, where are you going? To Grandma's house, answered Little Red Riding Hood. Well, where does Grandma live? asked the wolf. At the end of the path in the, wo in the woods, said Little Red Riding Hood. Just then, Little Red Riding Hood noticed some beautiful flowers on the side of the path. She stepped off the path to look at them. The wolf took this opportunity to run ahead on the path in the woods, go into Grandma's house, eat her up, put her clothes on, and jump in bed and wait for Little Red Riding Hood to arrive. Some time went by and Little Red Riding Hood realized that she'd stepped off the path. So she quickly jumped back onto the path. And she started quickly to skip towards Grandma's house because she knew how late it was getting. She entered the dark house and she went up to her Grandma's bed. And she said, Grandma, look, I brought you some cakes. But Grandma didn't say anything because as we know, it wasn't Grandma, it was the wolf. So Little Red Riding Hood squinted her eyes in the dark to see better and said, Granny, what big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my dear, said the wolf. Little Red Riding Hood then said, Granny, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf. Granny, what a big nose you have. All the better to smell you with, my dear, said the wolf. And then, Little Red Riding Hood said, But Granny, what big teeth you have. All the better to eat you with, shouted the wolf. A woodsman happened to be walking by Grandma's house just as the wolf tried to eat Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood screamed. The woodsman heard it and he ran into the house to save her. The woodsman hit the wolf over the head and as the wolf opened his mouth wide to scream, Grandma jumped out and ran out of the house. The woodsman looked at the wolf and said, you're in trouble now. But the wolf ran away and they all lived happily ever after. That's the fairy tale of Little Red Riding Hood. I hope you are remembering to turn your pencil. <laughs> Now there are different variations of that. The original fairy tale was written many hundreds of years ago. And I believe there wasn't even a grandma in the original one. It got changed over the years. But fairy tales were written for children as cautionary tales. Now, just a, a note, remember, don't color in the hands, okay? Be careful when you get around the hands in the basket area. Don't color in the hands. So yes, the fairy tales were written as cautionary tales, and a cautionary tale just means that it's written to teach someone a lesson of caution. What do you think the cautionary tale of Little Red Riding Hood is? Now think about it. Little Red Riding Hood was told to stay on the path. She was told not to talk to strangers. And she was told to go right to Grandma's house, right? 
and what happened in the fairy tale. She didn't go right to Grandma's house because she talked to the wolf. She didn't listen to her mother's advice saying not to talk to strangers because she talked to the wolf. And she didn't stay on her path because she got off her path to go look at some pretty flowers. Three things that her mother asked her not to do, she did. And you see what happened? She put herself and her grandmother in danger. And I know it's just a fairy tale and we're supposed to have fun with it, but really there are lessons behind every fairy tale. Sometimes you'll hear the saying, the moral of the story. And that just means, what is the lesson of the story? I don't know where you are at right now, but I'm near the hands here, so I'm being very careful again around the basket and around the hand, not to get any red in there. So if I asked you, what is the moral of the fairy tale, Little Red Riding Hood? What would you say? I have four that I thought about, four morals. I'm sure that you have some, you thought of the same ones I did. The big first one for me is don't talk to strangers. When you're an adult, it's a little bit different, but when you're a kid, even when you're a teenager, don't talk to strangers. I'm sure you've heard People say stranger danger. Well, that's, that's a smart thing to think of. And don't get me wrong, you don't have to be afraid of walking out your door. Some people are very, very nice. Most people are very, very nice. But you know what? It's always better to be safe. Don't talk to strangers. Okay. Now I'm finished her cape and her hood, and I'm gonna do her boots red as well. And we're gonna go in and put a second layer on all of this as well. Okay. I hope you guys are doing okay. All right. Now I have to actually, well, I think I'm gonna sharpen my pencil. It's a little bit dull right now. I forgot to sharpen it before we started, so see how small this is? But I say if you can still fit it in your sharpener, you can still use it. And mine still fits in the sharpener. just fits. <laughs> and if you don't know what this is, this is called a pencil extender. You just stick your pencil in there, tighten it, and you can use it as a regular pencil. Let me just wipe off some of the dust here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a second layer of red everywhere I put the first layer. And I'm going to start from the top. I'm pressing very lightly, coloring in circular strokes, and turning my pencil once in a while. Remember, a second layer just means you're coloring it in a second time. And you can see the difference between this second layer here and the first layers. The red is much more vibrant. You could always use markers to do this too, if you like. I just like using coloring pencils because I like doing layers and I like spending a lot of time drawing and coloring and painting and creating. I find it very, very relaxing. And it's a lot of fun too. It's a great hobby to have. 
puts you in the moment, makes you forget all your troubles. <laughs> so what were we talking about? Yes, the moral of the tale of Little Red Riding Hood. Well, we know, don't talk to strangers. Another moral of this story is listen to your mom and your dad. If they're telling you to do something or if they're warning you not to do something, it's because they know, they know better. They want to keep you safe. They want you to be happy. If your mom and dad tell you you have to bring the garbage out every week and you don't feel like doing it, well, you do it because your mom and dad asked you to do it. They're trying to teach you how to become a good person who's responsible. So you pay attention to your parents and do what they say. Be happy because they're taking care of you. They're teaching you how to live your life. Okay? How nice that is putting on a second layer and I'm really not pressing hard at all. So the first moral is don't talk to strangers. The second is listen to your mom and dad. And the third for me is stay on the path. If you're going to your friend's house Don't take shortcuts or go somewhere where you shouldn't be going. Just stay right on the path and you'll be safe and you'll get to your destination. Stay on the path. And a lot of people will say, stay on your path in life. Like if you're a kid and you decide you want to be a doctor, I think that's fabulous. Or if you want to be an artist, I think that's even more fabulous. <laughs> My friend Lily should consider being an artist. Stay on your path. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do what you want to do because your path is right for you. If you want to be a doctor, do everything you can to study to be a doctor. If you want to be an artist, learn everything you can about art and practice and enjoy. Stay on that path because if that path is right for you, you will be successful. Sometimes our friends can try to influence us not to do something or they can influence influence us to do something bad that we shouldn't be doing. I know that's happened before. When I was a kid I had a friend who was like that. She always tried to get me in trouble. <laughs> she always wanted to do stupid things and sometimes I did them with her and that was not the right path to take. So that's kind of what I mean by staying on the right path. Don't let others influence you. And I'm not talking about your parents. Your parents should influence you because they know what's best for you. But I'm talking about, you know, if people try to influence you to do something bad, stay on your path. Know who you are. Okay, I think Little Red Riding Hood is looking pretty good here. I hope you've been remembering to turn your pencil. I was telling you that Little Red Riding Hood is my favorite of all the fairy tales. I actually have a red cape. <laughs> and um, actually I'll put a, a photo of it up right now so you can see it. That's me in my red cape. <laughs> I bought it around Halloween time, but I wear it all the time. I don't just wear it at Halloween. 
I say it's my everyday cape. <laughs> Don't forget the little spots in between the handle of the basket. Make sure you get those too. Okay, so now for the boots. What's your favorite fairy tale? And what have you learned from it? Sometimes we forget that there might be a lesson to learn. If you can learn a lesson in life, always learn it. Always, always, always learn it. It's worth it. Okay, so why don't I give you just a moment if you need to catch up. Okay, now I'm going to take my black marker and if you have a black coloring pencil, you could use that as well. And for this drawing, I'm going to be doing a lot of detail work, more than what I usually do for my other drawings. We're going to start from the top and work our way down to the bottom. And I'm going to outline pretty much the entire drawing. Because I really, really want it to stand out. And I'm going to be careful. I'm trying to stay on my pencil line here. So like I said, I'm starting from the top and working my way down. The next thing I'm going to do is outline her eyes. And outline the pupil, the little oval in the middle. And if you've done my art, lessons before, you know what we're going to do. We're going to fill in the pupil with black. So she's got nice big eyes. Okay, while we're at it, I'm just going to outline those little eyelashes that I put on her. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with the other eye. And the pupil. And let's color in that pupil black. There we go. A little dust there. And I'm going to outline the eyelashes here too. She's looking happy already. <laughs> she hasn't met the wolf yet. And now let's outline her nose and her smile with the cheeks. There. And I'm going to outline, like I said, I'm pretty much outlining almost everything that I drew with pencil. Because I really want it to show. Okay. Let's do the outline of the entire cape. While I'm at it on this side, I'm going to do the outline of her sleeves too. And 
hand I'm doing her hands I'm basically like I said pretty much doing the whole thing the basket I'm not gonna do the cakes just the basket And this is optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just think it's going to look nicer because there's just so much red on there. It's hard to see, you know, the sleeve area. I'm doing her shoes or her boots. Her socks remind me of the Wicked Witch of the West from, uh, sound, uh, no, what's it called again? Wizard of Oz. You know, the, the witch had those striped socks <laughs> or stockings. Okay, now this side of the cape. And our dress at the bottom with that little frill here. Okay, now lastly, this side of the cape. There. What else do I want to do? You know what? I'm going to do the cakes. I'm doing the cakes. Why not, huh? I've outlined everything else. May as well do the cakes. And I'm going to do the little zigzags for the basket as well. I want those to stand out. pretty good. Did I forget anything? Well, let's see. I could do the outline of her hair. If I'm careful here. Just the outline of her hair like that. There. I think she's done. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy this? I hope you enjoyed it. Now don't forget, sign your work. I want you to always sign your work because it's very important that you take ownership of the beautiful creation, this beautiful work of art that you just created. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson, my friends. And remember to mom and dad, if you post your kids' art on Instagram, please don't forget to tag me. The link is in the description below or in the About section of this channel. So we'll see you next time on Let's Draw Fairy Tales. Thanks again for watching. Bye.